Dr. Fauci, thank you so much for joining us and, and thank you for everything that, uh, that you have done over the past year and over your many years uh, dealing with diseases and this pandemic in, in particular. Um, I, I wanted to start uh, talking for a bit about uh, the race between the vaccine and the variants uh, and uh, the importance of getting as many va people vaccinated, uh, not only in the United States, but really globally. Uh, as possible in order to ensure that more dangerous variants uh, don't emerge and, and, and uh, defeat the vaccine. Can you talk a little bit about this relationship uh, be, uh, between vaccines and the longevity of the disease and how, it, how they might, uh, the virus might mutate and become sure. uh, a problem? Oh, yes. I think the fundamental principle that people need to understand is that viruses do not mutate unless they replicate. Uh, and replication means spreading through different communities, particularly in people who might be immunosuppressed where the virus stays in their body a long time and gets immunological pressure to mutate. The best way to prevent that is to get, is to prevent the spread of infection. You, you, you prevent the spread of infection by two ways, by adhering very carefully to the public health measures that we recommend that so commonly heard the uniform masking, uh, the distancing, the avoiding congregate settings, particularly indoors, washing of hands. But importantly, now that we have safe and effective vaccines to get as many people vaccinated as quickly and as expeditiously as possible. It is also important to appreciate some subtleties and nuances. And that is, even if you get vaccinated against the virus that is now circulating in the community and a variant comes in, if you have a high enough level of antibodies because the vaccine induces a really good immune response, you may not get protected against infection with the variant, but you almost certainly will be protected against getting serious disease, including hospitalizations and death. And that's exactly what we saw in the J&J &J trial that took place in South Africa, in which the efficacy was not as high as it was for example, in the United States, but the dangerous uh, variant, the one that is predominant in South Africa, the B1351, that one did not cause any hospitalizations or death because of the vaccination. So vaccines can be good, one, to prevent you from actually getting infected, two, from preventing you from getting symptomatic disease, and even when you don't have a, a di direct match between the vaccine and the variant, the vaccine could still be helpful, very helpful, in preventing you from getting very severe disease resulting in hospitalizations and death. With regard to your other question, which is very important, if we do not get the entire world protected against infection, that what will happen is that we could do a really good job in the United States or in the UK or in the European Union and yet, if in some of the middle and lower income countries in Southern Africa, in South America, in the Caribbean, if they don't get vaccinated, the, vac the virus can still smolder in those areas and ultimately mutate, come back to a country that seems to be well protected because of a vaccine and make it very problematic because you can get reinfected with a, vac with a virus, even if you've been uh, infected once before if the virus is substantially different. So A, get people vaccinated as quickly and as expeditiously as possible. B, a global pandemic requires a global response. So we need to take a look at the rest of the world and make sure that we pull together as a global community to suppress this. Otherwise, the variants will continue to recycle and be problematic. So I, I think this global piece is, is sometimes forgotten, particularly in our in our own domestic debate, uh, and it, and it is so important. And I think it was uh, yourself who who announced uh, to the WHO that we were coming back in, but also we're going to join Covax earlier this year. This international effort to get vaccines to uh, people who who don't have the same uh, financial and other resources as we may have. So how are we going to make sure that enough vaccines are not only going to be uh, provided here in the United States, but around the world. How are we going to make sure that we beat those variants from emerging 
uh, in the other parts of the world by having uh, vaccines coming there as fast as possible? And, and should we think about perhaps uh, sharing more of our own vaccine uh, uh, load uh, and, and the rich countries in particular, uh, providing that to the poorer countries so more people are vaccinated around the world more quickly, not only from an equity perspective, but ultimately from a global health perspective. Yeah. Well, the first step, and I'm not going to get into the second or third step, I'm going to leave that to the president and others who are involved in that. But the first step is is a really good step that we took. Namely, we joined COVID. And as you mentioned, I had the privilege of being the one to announce at the executive committee of the World Health Organization that A, we're coming back into the WHO, and B, we're joining COVAX. Next, the president has pledged $4 billion, $2 billion now and $2 billion in the future. What we do with the doses, I'm going to be leaving that to the evolving plan that we have about how we can help be part of the global solution. But I think you'll be hearing about more about that in the future. Uh, but it is just uh, apart from where it's going to come from, it, it is important that we get to as many people around the world uh, as, as quickly as possible for that, uh, for that reason. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Uh, talk a little bit, if you will, about how we should think about uh, the future of this pandemic, the future of this disease. Um, there's this sense that once everybody is vaccinated, we'll go back to, to, to the normal from before. Is that how you see the disease evolving and our, our lives evolving? Will we all be able to, to you know watch the World Series and hopefully the Nationals or the Cubs or whoever are going to be in it uh, in, in person and we can go back to normal? Or do you think there is a constant back and forth between vaccines, variants uh, in this disease as it evolves? How should we think about the future? What's our new normal? Like? You know, I think that's unpredictable. It's unpredictable because it's going to depend on how many people we do vaccinate in this country. I mean, if we get a degree of vaccine hesitancy where there are people who don't want to get vaccinated, we could have a smoldering situation in our own country. Even if we're successful in getting the overwhelming majority of people vaccinated and we get a level of virus that's very, very low. Right now, the baseline is smoldering between 50,000 and 70,000 per day. It was as high as over 300,000 a day not too long ago. We've got to get it down to a very, very low baseline. Once we get there, then we can have a step-by-step -step progression towards normality in our own country. Hopefully, that will be as we get to the fall, mid-fall, early winter of this year. That is conceivable if we do things right, if we get people vaccinated, if people that adhere to the public health measures and don't jump the gun and see the levels go down and all of a sudden abandon all public health measures, which would be really quite detrimental and could lead to a rebound, that would be the first step to normality. The preservation of normality would be how we handle it globally, namely what we were just discussing a moment ago, how we get the rest of the world to have such a containment and control of the virus that we don't have a cycling that every year we have to be chasing against variants. We cannot predict that unless we actually do the things that need to be done, which what we said, public health measures, including an efficient and effective way to get as many people vaccinated as we possibly can. Dr. Fauci, thank you so much. Those are uh, wise words uh, on, on the public health measures and getting vaccinated. It's not only important for ourselves, it's important for everyone else. So appreciate uh, you being with us and thank you so much. My, my pleasure. Thank you for having me.